Dites-moi où donc elle paille et flora la belle hermène. Rachapi à dame taille qui faut sa cousine germaine. Et que par l'ango bruit amène des serrières et ce étang qui bottait être plus que même mais au sang les neiges d'antan qui bottait être plus que même mais au sang les neiges d'antan. I'm particularly affected by objects re reading the meaning into an object like my shards the bits of old pottery they speak to me they're not just bits of broken pot to me they are traces of human beings perhaps that is one of the ways i begin to key into the idea of a person when i'm thinking about it when i'm writing a biography of them there are little often inconsequential things that give me that sudden sense of immediacy suddenly the person is there There was no question, Chanel was one of the drivers of her age. She was one of the drivers of the 20th century. She was one of the makers of the 20th century. She wanted to be independent, but she wanted to be independent by working. She didn't need the suffragettes because she just was living a very liberated life. And I think that fascinated me because that's not what's normally said about Chanel. And I wanted to make that case for her. She changed women's lives. I made a number of very important new discoveries about her. And I've put Gabrielle Chanel into a historical context. Her family were absolutely dirt poor. It was very, very poor education. Her mother died when she was 11. She says, when I, by the time I was 12, I realized that money opened the gates to everything. She didn't mean money just for its own sake. She wanted money to get independence. There's this conflict of this worldly, extremely competent, highly intelligent, deeply creative woman and conscious that her period is a world that is making a new world. The Picassos, the Stravinsky's, the Diaghilev, the Jean Cocteau's, all these artists and poets and musicians that she knew, they were making a new world and she was part of it. Alongside that, the mercantile part of her was conscious of this idea of making yourself into a commodity. There's no question that she was the first brand. It's very important that she had an affair with Stravinsky. Chanel herself represented to him, I suspect more than any other woman he knew at the time, modernity. She influenced something about his mindset at that time. Um, she said to him, um, quite early on, um, will your wife, Catherine, not, not mind about us possibly having an affair? Typical Stravinsky, typical Russian. He said, oh, but who could I tell something so important if not my wife? This little piece of paper is um, an amazing little document which helped me discover so much more about Arthur Cable. She said, he made me. Without him, I would have been nothing. I'm the first biographer that took her at her own word. And I thought, if I find out more about him, I must be able to find out more about her. And I did. <laughs> She led her life in a way that was pretty outrageous, pretty unconventional, and she didn't care. She never cared. She uh, was quite happy to have bisexual relationships, and her use of drugs was part of this whole attitude that you create what you're creating, which is work, hard work. Capel said, remember that you're a woman, 
And she said, all too often I forgot that. You could talk about the, tra the trajectory as being her life, her life and the brand, and then post-war and certainly post her death, just the brand. So she has become just an icon, a myth. In my mind, there's absolutely no question that Gabrielle Chanel had an enormous effect on the world and left it a very different place from when she came into it. Au sentier le vieil Jésus